Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. We're going to go out to New York City, discuss some promotions in the Bonanno crime family. Bruno Indelicato, longtime Bonanno crime family figure, goes all the way back to the 70s. Um, and the uh, Cigar and Rusty and Sonny Black and his dad, Sonny Red. We all know about it. The movie Donnie Brasco. Um, Bruno has been, according to my sources, uh, has been up to conciliary and Mikey knows Mancuso, uh, is finishing up his year long prison sentence for his, uh, violation of supervised release will be coming out of federal lockup, um, by end of the summer, probably sooner. And from what I'm hearing, uh, from the Bronx is that he wants to get all of his house cleaning in order before he comes back and wants to make sure that everything's running smoothly and all the um, rough edges have been smoothed out. And some of that is making nice with people and factions of the crime family that he has not always seen eye to eye with, or at one time saw eye to eye with and then no longer did. Um, in both of these cases, and I'm being told that Bruno and Delicato is the answer to these, you know, these issues. Um, and uh, you know, he's 77 years old. He's been around forever. He's connected to everybody. Uh, he was a capo back for a period of time in the late, or sorry, uh, late 70s, early 80s. He was, you know, the trigger man on maybe the most iconic mob hit of the. Uh, the last 25 years of the, of the 20th century outside of Castellano. Um, the Galante hit in the summer of 79. And uh, even though he's never been in an admin post, he's somebody that, you know, and he's got a reputation for being a little bit of a cowboy. He's still somebody that, you know, he's mellowed in, in later years, I'm told. And uh, he's been a voice of reason over these last couple of years with all the issues in that crime family related to Mancuso and the guys in Brooklyn, the Camerano brothers and, and them trying to take over with Joe C trying to take over the crime family when Mikey was finishing up his last prison sentence and whatnot. And I'm told that Bruno has arranged for kind of bygones to be bygones when it comes to uh, Joe C. And also when it comes to Vinny Basciano, uh, the former boss, someone that used to be, relatively close to, to Mikey Nose became, uh, Mikey Nose became Vinny's acting capo and then his acting boss when Vinny became boss. But at the end of that relationship, Vinny had put out a contract, a murder contract on the head of Mr. Mancuso that was never carried out, held some grudges. And Bruno and, Deca and Delicato is one of Vinny Basciano's best friends. They go all the way back to the Sunny Red crew. Uh, Vinny made his, you know, his rise up the ladder as a young man, as a driver for a big Trini, who was, you know, Sonny Red's uh, one of the three capos. And, you know, he's got an appeal uh, in the works right now. It's probably a long shot, probably a Hail Mary, but who knows? And he's got some people, some loyalists uh, that have been, um, you know, the crimes of, of Mr. Basciano have been held against some loyalists, some family members. And with, with Bruno coming in, I'm told that that's all going by the wayside. Some guys from the Basciano faction will, will get their button. Uh, all the, the Joe C nonsense will go away. It's obviously it's tamped down in the last you know year since Mancuso uh, will have to do his time. And you know, this this is kind of the new the new look going forward. Everybody is uh, unified, and uh, I reported on on Gangster Report, our companion web magazine, a couple weeks ago that there was a a party held at, at uh, Mikey Nose's girlfriend's uh, high end eyeglass shop, where the whole family came out, to, you know, to show a unified front. And this was, I'm told, Bruno's kind of his first public. Um, you know, he. I think he got he got the promotion at some point in the spring, and you know, the, at that event he was kind of being 
treated with a, like a higher level of esteem. Um, last thing I'll note about this is that this isn't a situation where Mancuso's alleged former consigliere, uh, Vinny Badalamenti, a.k.a. Vinny TV, he wasn't pushed out or anything. Uh, Vinny is one of the, it was one, was one of the driving forces behind this, I'm told, um, was looking to, to take a step back anyway. Uh, he's been known as kind of the Mancuso whisperer, uh, represents Brooklyn, not the Bronx, and has been kind of the biggest loyalist for, for Mancuso uh, from that Brooklyn group. And uh, Battle of Mendy, Jerry Asaro was Queens capo, one of his Queens capos, Johnny Skyway, one of the street bosses, all kind of were in favor of this. And it happened. So congratulations to Bruno and Delicato. He's got an administrative post for the first time in his lengthy mob career, half century. Um, he's 77. And I think he will be a, a big X factor in this family moving forward uh, instead of going backwards. So Scott Bernstein, OG Pod.